And then I started adding on that and it became almost like a, uh, um, what do you call that? It just almost became like, like you're riffing with a friend. Right, and right. And it's like, okay, uh, he's going to have an M16 and it's going to blow apart the other guy and it's going to be Joan of Arc. Yeah, it's yeah, like, yeah. what the hell? You yeah, know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I just remember as I'm working on it, I'm laughing as right. I'm working on it. I was like, that's the feeling. You should have fun doing it. Right, you're right. Welcome back to another episode of Art of the Bay Sessions. Today, we are joined by our special guest, Steven. How's it going, man? Good, man. Thanks for the invite. Yeah, yeah, no worries. I, I know it's been getting kind of cold here in the Bay Area recently, like all this rain and everything like that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, it makes driving around kind of like dangerous and miserable, but yeah. <laughs> we'll get through it. Exactly, yeah. Hopefully the warmer times are coming pretty soon. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I hope so too. Yeah, well, thank you so much for stopping by. I know like um, we kind of had some last minute uh, rearranging, so I, I really appreciate you taking the time to, to head out here. Sure, man, no problem. Uh, so yeah, I just kind of wanted to uh, start off. I usually ask this question for uh, for folks when we kick off the podcast. Um, can you give us a little bit of a, a background of yourself and just like your overall career? Yeah, uh, so I started professionally uh, illustrating in 2012. Uh-huh. And then it was kind of on and off. And finally in 2016, I went to LA and storyboarded for a while for about what was like four or five years oh uh-huh. uh but then pandemic happened and uh you know there was the quarantine and things shut down so i kind of moved back up here had to kind of reevaluate what i wanted to do and in those like what are we on the sixth year now i think year six um mm-hmm. i had a lot of time to just you know work on my graphic novel joan so yeah um and then yeah right now i'm just kind of uh i'm i'm still working on more joan stuff more illustration projects so that that's kind of where i'm right now oh nice did you um did you go to uh any art school or anything when to to get everything i i i had a weird background so i started off actually pursuing graphic design oh okay Uh and that was my background and uh you know, Asian parents, right? So you go like, <laughs> what are you studying now? And then yeah, I said, yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm studying graphic design. And it was like, they didn't know what to say. Yeah. Uh, so I, I did the uh, uh, other, I went the other direction. So I actually finished my degree in economics. Oh, okay. Uh-huh. Yeah. And uh, my background has been a, a variety of things. So um, a, a lot of what's influenced my art comes from that. Uh, I mean, I've, I've had a background being a, uh you know like short film uh filmmaker mm-hmm. i've uh you know i've been a martial artist for like a very long time uh-huh. doing like kung fu uh karate kickboxing oh nice and then um you know i played with dabbled in stunts for a little bit too Ooh, uh, uh-huh. wrote screenplays so uh you know storyboarded too so a lot of that and also outside of the arts and entertainment you know i worked in my dad's real estate office. Uh, I've worked in recycling plants. Oh, nice. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's just kind of over map. And, you know, uh, I've taught for a very long time. So uh, all that kind of just has been my experience with the arts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, but uh, as far as like official art training, it's more like I took classes. Oh, okay. Uh-huh. And then I would look at like tutorials online. So pretty much, I mean, I hate the word self-taught because mm-hmm. it, it sounds as if like you learn everything on your own. But no, I, I kind of, piece together my own art education yeah 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 uh so either it was taking community courses or taking courses online so Mm -hmm. uh that pretty much and then also i I felt like my experience in la was my art college experience yeah because um you know you're not just getting an art professor saying okay this is this is good or this is bad you're actually getting people who are paying you to tell you what's good and what's bad Yeah, yeah yeah uh so that informed me a lot on how to draw uh so that i could communicate clearly what it is my i guess my vision was right right so right. yeah 
Yeah, I think that's always the thing too. Is like when people kind of label it as like self taught or anything like yeah. that, they don't really uh, put into account all those other things that you pick up along the way. So, right. so it's it's not just like oh, I'm just watching YouTube and just like learning that. It's all that life experience that you just said. Yeah, exactly. I I think it's very really interesting. I think um, you know film directors talk about this a lot. And I always compare comic book making to filmmaking. Right, it's right, right. Very much the same thing. Um, I've always felt as if. You know, on the filmmaking side, a lot of film directors talk about how all these experiences made their art form. Right. But I don't hear that a lot from comic book artists. Yeah. It seems like I study from this or I learned this. But, you know, it's really interesting because I think um, Sean Gordon Murphy talked about it. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, was it? Uh, I can't remember. It was. Uh, it was. Uh, Christ Punk, I can't remember the title right yeah. now, but in one of his books, um, I feel bad not remembering the, the book's name. <laughs> we'll, we'll make sure to put like something afterwards, okay, yeah, like yeah, if, yeah. We, if we think of it. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure there's a little, like, a little subtitle. Right. Kind of deal. <laughs> um, but uh, uh, I remember in that book, he talked about you know his experience as to why he created the book and a lot, and it had to do with a personal near-death experience. Mm -hmm. And so I thought, okay, well, why aren't comic book creators talking more about that? Right, right, right. So right. anyway, that, that's always been my view. I just feel like you know more of that personal narrative needs to come in there the personal experience yeah uh because i don't know that's fascinating that that is the story that's right. why the stories exist is from that experience right 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 so if i'm rambling let me know oh no 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 like i <laughs> i think you're you're absolutely right because i think that's also the thing too is when you see like for example with the stories that you have there's there has to be like a backstory or like or else you're just kind of creating things out of nowhere and it, that, that doesn't make sense either yeah so i think you're absolutely right that we want to hear like those backstories and that's why um, with anything like with directors or comic book writers, like there's always that back history that people yeah. lo love to, to hear at that point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, um, you know, I hear actors talk about that a lot. Yeah, yeah, You yeah. know, where actors like, you know, um, I love Nicolas Cage. You mm -hmm. know, I mean, he's become like an internet meme. <laughs> yeah, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. But, you know, I, I was of the generation where, you know, I caught enough of his earlier works. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I remember him talking about leaving Las Vegas and I think right, something right. he did where like he um, he said instead of like pretending to know what it's like to act like a drunk, mm -hmm. he's like, why don't I actually get drunk, film myself right, and right. watch what that's like? Yeah. And I thought, well, that's like brilliant, yeah. you know? And so I try to approach it from that. Uh, and, you know, every little experience I have, sometimes I may not be aware of it, but I do try to do my best to reflect on it. And mm -hmm. I say, okay. What was that experience like? Yeah. And then I, you know, I jotted down my notebook or I put it in like some mental journal here and I go, okay, I'm going to save that because that might come up later in my life. Right, so right. I just think that's important. Yeah, yeah. That's awesome. Um, I was looking at your LinkedIn earlier and uh, I saw, yeah, that you were working on um, storyboarding yeah. uh, for, for, for films. Is, is that correct? Yeah, it was just more of personal projects. Some, oh, okay. some more were professional projects. So, yeah, go ahead. Oh no no yeah yeah oh, so, okay yeah, yeah so <laughs> I just want to see like what what that his or experience was like so yeah um so a lot of the storyboards uh, so what happened was I kind of I got lucky um when I was two months um into moving to L A oh, I, wow. I I uh, had multiple projects come my way mm -hmm. and uh, a lot of those projects I hate to say um, of the many I worked on they were always you know, pitch ideas or ideas that are maybe in the works, but then they just would fall through. Right, right, right. So uh, one that I did, I mean, the very first one I did was for uh, 28 Entertainment, and they're really cool. Uh, Brian, uh, Brian J. Hoffman mm -hmm. and uh, Eric Weston, uh, he was the producer on that, but he basically wrote me into this project. Oh, okay. Uh -huh. And uh, the idea was interesting. It was, uh, it's called Codename Johnny Walker, and uh, it was this book that they had adapted, and it was about this Iraqi interpreter who ends up being friends with this uh, squad of uh, U.S. Army Rangers. Oh. And it was was during the 2003 invasion and um you know it's gonna be interesting like kind of a, a dramatic action film mm -hmm. and uh so it was really cool i got invited to go to uh was it called blue sky ranch on um, santa clarita oh okay i think yeah yeah, yeah you know yeah, yeah. and i got to see like they basically built a base that looks like iraq oh wow yeah and yeah, it was yeah. really amazing i mean uh uh 
you know, you, you walk through like corridors and through doors. I mean, you look like, it feels like you're actually there. Right, 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 right. So, um, and I think they filmed American Sniper there or something like that. Oh yeah, that actually makes sense. Yeah, yeah. 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 So, um, you know, I got a chance to see that. Then I saw the tanks that they were gonna like rent out. And, yeah. Um, so, you know, I basically, I was hired for, I think what, about like two months or something. And I was working on just sketching all day and work on stuff. Yeah. And uh, uh, I think I provided like at least like, it was up, up to like maybe three to 500 storyboards. Mm -hmm. um, it was really exhausting, but you know, it was cool. But then it just didn't go anywhere. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and so I didn't know that at the time. I just thought that, you know, it's kind of one of those things where you like you work and then everything is greenlit. Everything, everything you make eventually makes it, but I didn't realize like over time, that's not how it works. Right, either, right. You know, there's, I mean, for, I mean, for each person who has like millions of ideas in their head, I can't imagine multiply it by the millions of people that live in LA. Yeah. Like everyone's trying to pitch these ideas. So I think I kind of, um, I got used to that idea. So whatever I worked on, I had just complete this uh, low expectation, yeah. high energy, low expectation. Yeah. And walking into it. Um, one that actually really worked out was uh, uh, David uh, uh, Jung's uh, uh, book, or uh, sorry, uh, short cyberpunk movie run, uh -huh. writer of another mortal oh okay. uh, it's on youtube uh it was uh distributed by dust and uh because they do a lot of like short cyberpunk films or sci-fi films yeah so anyway, it was released on there and uh that one was really fun to work on i did all the storyboards and i sat with david and you know we're working in at, at this restaurant in burbank and mm -hmm. it was like we meet what like at least once a week or something where we just like you know hash out like what, what was gonna oh, happen nice. to each scene yeah, yeah yeah so uh that one actually uh i was i was pretty excited about and especially like when it became a thing like yeah. you're literally watching your boards become oh, yeah. live you that's know? amazing yeah. yeah it was really cool so um and yeah so that's kind of like uh that's uh what i've been doing the storyboards a, a lot of it was more ad work yeah but every now and then i get that you know the, the short form uh the short films or independent film works yeah and that was really awesome that was fun that's awesome yeah i'm really grateful about that do you uh do you kind of create them in like large uh scale uh storyboards and then just print them out for like a portfolio or how, how do you go about no like, uh the way it? i created it was more uh it was just i you know i create my own templates and it was uh you know the aspect ratio 16 uh, yeah, yeah, and yeah. all that yeah, yeah. and so uh a lot of the works were just digital and then you just submit a directly oh, to, perfect. The, yeah, yeah, to yeah. the uh director so yeah, yeah yeah that's pretty cool yeah yeah especially like you get that hands-on like feedback right away so you can just kind of like start improving like a, what to yeah. switch up or anything like that. Yeah, I, I, I'm always big on process. Yeah. So one of the things that I had noticed over time is I, I think there's a school of thought, which is like the outcome matters more. Yeah. Oh, and then there's people who go like, well, process is first, but I like to like, I, I think process and outcome are two of the same things. Mm -hmm. It's just, it just depends on what stage you're at. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you know, when I'm working on directors, I, I, I love how they think. You know, they're constantly like, okay, let's do this, let's do that. And I love being invited into that process. Right, right, you know? right. And then finally, when we get to the outcome stage, then it's like, okay, did the process reflect, you know, what it is that we were trying to do? Yeah. And so, you know, it's just that, that, that work process has always been like my favorite thing to do. And yeah, so yeah. Uh, that's one of the reasons why I love doing visual narrative because you're never really by yourself right, you, right, you right you need someone to tell the story to and that person says well okay i like this but mm -hmm. i think we could improve on this and you know let's try to change that and um i think when you have someone that that is willing to work with you on that i think it's just like it's like a marriage made in heaven yeah yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah yeah i i've talked about this before in previous episodes where i think just having uh people in the same space to collaborate. Yeah. It, it, your creative process just goes differently compared to like, if you're explaining this to like a coworker who, who isn't interested in, yeah. in, the, in the creative world. Yeah. That, yeah, you just bounce off way better when you're surrounded by other creatives yeah. at that point. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and that is so interesting too, because in this field, I feel like a lot of it is built on relationships. Yeah. There's a lot of people who say, well, you know, it's just about the creative work, but. I don't think so. I think when you find that person, that person can strengthen what you're doing. Yeah. So uh, on my uh, comic book right now, I'm working with um, an editor, uh, Robert Romeo. Mm -hmm. And I had actually worked on a comic with him before. It's called um, 
uh, Reckon for a Murderer. Mm-hmm. And uh, sorry, Reckon for a Psychopath. And mm-hmm. I'm horrible with names today. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. Like I, that's why I just have to like visually see it, and then yeah. I'll be like, okay, yeah, I and then I remember. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, but I actually worked on it, so I'm a little embarrassed. But anyway, uh, for Reckon for a Psychopath. You know, it was fun working with them because he's one of those um, creative people where you go back and forth with them, mm-hmm. you know, and, and he he wants to hear what your thoughts are. So on my comic now, he he's doing that for me, mm-hmm. you know, so I would ask him, what do you think? And he'll just tell me like up front, this is what I see. Yeah. But he goes the extra step, which he'll say like, I think we should change this though, mm-hmm. uh, because this might make it uh, work better. Yeah. Or he'll even ask the question, he goes, do you think it will work if we did this? Right, right, right. And that, it's stuff that is so rare because you can find anybody to collab with, yeah, and they could just offer you just the bare minimum, yeah. yeah but yeah. then it takes that that very special individual, that creative partner, who's going to go, yeah, but maybe add this to yeah, it, you yeah. know. And I think that's just so wonderful. It's yeah, really yeah. beautiful. The the thing that we wanted to do too with this new season is we wanted to get people's experiences with doing like different pop-up events and different like expo shows. And I, I, I think we were talking about this before uh, going on camera with uh, like Powerhouse uh, Con and yeah, yeah. the different ones that are around the area. Yeah. Um, do you remember like what your uh, first show was? Like when you first like yeah. decided to start doing these different expos? Yeah, yeah. Uh, it was uh, Alternative alternative Press Expo. Oh, nice, nice. Yeah, yeah. Wait, which year did you end up? Uh, it was like 2012, I think. Oh, really early on. 2012, maybe 2013? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, so that was like October 2013. Yeah, October 2013. And uh, that was funny because that was like a year after I decided, okay, I want to do this professionally. Yeah. And um, uh, God, it was like, I, I look back at the art and I cringe. Yeah. Because, I mean, that was interesting because... You know, I, I come from a household where, you know, my father's really good at uh, giving you doubts about what you're doing because mm-hmm. he, 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 you know, he, he had this immigrant mentality of like, okay, I'm going to do this. Everything's very pragmatic. But anything that kind of went outside of that, it, there was always room for, um, I guess, uh, f- for scrutiny. Yeah. You know, yeah. it was like, are you sure this is the right, you know, uh, way to go about things? And, and that invites doubt. So. Um, at one point in my life, I decided, okay, I don't want that anymore. Yeah. I just like, if I make a decision to do it, I'm doing it. And yeah. so I remember making this graphic novel and it's so hilarious. Cause now I'm, I'm just kind of laughing at myself. Like who told you that that was okay at that point? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. But I just, I did not care. It, it was like 60 something pages. Oh, wow. And, yeah, yeah. And I was like, I'm going at it, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. full speed ahead. And, uh, and, um, you know, I admire the the attitude, you know, but I think over time also, you know, kind of life kind of beats you up a little bit. Mm-hmm. And especially when you're working now, it's like there is room f- for criticism. Yeah. And you always go like, oh, did I do that right? So, you know, the work I do now, sometimes a lot of that gets in the way. It didn't make me better, but I also feel like it does get in the way. Yeah. It yeah. does make you go like, okay, um, you know, am I doing this right? Is this the right thing to do? You know, um, so I've been trying to, kind of combine that old me from 2013 mm-hmm. uh, with the new me now. It's like, you know, still leave room for, you know, uh, for giving yourself feedback on your work, but then like open up feedback from people you trust too. Yeah. Uh, but then also like you have to have that high energy going into it. Right, right, You know, right. um, it, it, it really is a leap of faith. That's what I learned. Yeah. And so like when you do the art, it's like, and I'm not even talking about like financial success. It's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about just having the balls to go like, this is what I want to make. This is what I want to put out there. And if you're not happy with it, cool. Somebody else's. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and I, I really have to stick to my guns when I do that. Um, and it's really tough because you do hear feedback from people. Yeah. You know, and it can be very defeating. Yeah. And if you internalize it, you're like, well, that wasn't good. Like, oh my God, you know what happened? But I think there's the other side to it too, which is like, I think people can give you feedback, but you also have the power to go like, well, I don't think you're right about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, so, yeah. With, with that, like, how did you experience that? I would imagine, especially like the first few shows that you're doing, yeah. like you're getting both those like positive uh, <laughs> yeah. feedback and also like the constructive fee- feedback as yeah. well. So like, how is that for you? Like um, when you get that? I guess back then and, and even now, like when you when you do these, these events? Nowadays, is that kind of, 
uh, it, I find humor in it. Uh -huh. uh, okay, so, <laughs> oh man, so I had someone return Joan to me. So, you know, my, my comic is Joan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, uh, you know, it's like, uh, what if Quentin Tarantino directed Joan of Arc? That yeah, was yeah. always my pitch for it. So yeah. I'm taking this historical figure and putting it in this really ridiculous mm -hmm. setting, okay? So the cover says explicit content. Mm -hmm. So, and my pitch is Tarantino meets Joan of Arc, right? Yeah, yeah, so yeah. it already has this air of, okay, it's going to get a little messy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, what ended up happening was that <laughs> this young lady, I mean, she seemed like, and young, I mean, like an adult, young adult, right? Mm -hmm. She seemed like, oh, wow, okay, like I know what those things are. Mm. But I think she only heard Joan of Arc. Mm. So what happened was she came back, her eyes were like, tearing up and oh, she, wow. yeah and she was like i ordinarily don't do this but you can keep the money but i want to give you back the book and i just oh, thought wow. wow you know but i think that's what's happening is i made something really weird and it could be anything to someone's you know pers perspective they could go like oh that's what that thing is and then they look at it and go well that's not what it yeah, is at yeah, all. Yeah, 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 yeah. so one of the things i learned is just that like it's okay to be a little outlandish you know um you can be a little over the top and it's fine, you yeah. know, and, and there's an audience for that. And uh, I mean, look at horror movies. Right, right, right. You know, it's like there's so many horror movies out there and yet there's still people who enjoy it. Uh, it's definitely not for someone who wants to watch Eat, Pray, Love or something like yeah, that. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. I mean, it's like it's a horror movie. You know what you're getting when you yeah. go into it, you know. And so, like, I kind of have to look at it like that. Like, if I'm making something pulpy and it's it has that grindhouse flavor yeah, yeah yeah okay then you know expect not a lot of people to like you know go like oh okay you know expect you know a certain type of person to go like oh well, yeah okay awesome in fact i had a person uh someone purchased joan at mm -hmm. a convention yeah and uh they did a review of it and it was really cool so they they um uh, they put Joan and they had a beer next to it and it was called the Heretic Beer. Oh. And I was like, that's really awesome. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. It, it's Again, it's like somebody who like can indulge in it and doesn't mind. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. I'm going to sit back with a beer and I'm going to read this really crazy action-packed <laughs> story, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like what you see? Many of the studio items are made from local artists. Learn more about each artist in the episode description. Thanks again, and let's jump back into the episode. Yeah, I, I think we were talking about earlier when we used to do um, shows before the pandemic. It, it's the same thing, like, even that was just like five years ago, and same thing, like, when you just get exposed to it for the first time of just getting all that uh, honest and direct feedback. Yeah. Like it, it yeah, it, it hurts a little bit because yeah. you're, you're putting pretty much your, your soul out there with your work. Yeah. So it's just so much to kind of collect at the same time. Yeah. Um, what, what advice would you say like for people like, since you're there like a long, like a long time, like some of them could be like, you're there from like 11 to like six or something like that. Mm -hmm. Like how do you, um, how do you take all that in for such like a long period of time at that point? Like, Dude, it's tough, man. Uh, I did Emerald City Comic Con last year. Uh huh. Wait, what are we? January? Now? Yeah, last year. Yeah, so. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Lost track of time. But, yeah. Um, no, last year it was tough because uh, it was a four day show. Ooh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you yeah, know. Yeah. And so, uh, I mean, I've all, I, you know, the longest I've ever done was like Sack Anime. That was three days, but Emerald City was four days. Yeah. And I, 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 it's just, you know, my girlfriend, Rachel, and I, uh, you know, she, I mean, she's such a trooper. She was, like, helping me out and everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, like, she's really good with, like, um, uh, visual merchandising. Yeah. So she did all of it for me. But she's never been, she's never used to just doing a convention for that long. Yeah. So um, at one point, both her and I were, like, this at the table on the fourth day. <laughs> you know, I was just like, man, this is one time. Because. You know, it was a great experience. There were people coming to my table, you know, and I was really grateful for all that. But, like, it's the fourth day in, after, like, talking to, like, you know, yeah, all these yeah. people, you're just, like, exhausted, you know? Drained at that You're point. just drained, you yeah, know? Yeah. So you just want to put your head down and just be like, all right, like, I don't want to talk to anyone, you know? Which, yeah. you know, you don't want to do that yeah. because it looks unapproachable. But, um, I don't know, I, I think that the, the thing that worked for me is, um, number one, I always kind of mentally prepare myself. Yeah. And number two, like if you have someone that can 
kind of be there to help out. Like yeah. if you have someone who uh, like, you know, like Rachel was there and what she would do is she would uh, hang out in it and we, we pretty much are, we're getting used to like times mm. when things slow down. So when things slow down, I don't mind if she goes in for a walk and whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, and then when things pick up, then she'll come back. You know? Yeah. And then when that dies down, then like maybe I'll get up and I'll go walk. Right, around, right, right. You know. But it's like, I think what it what it is is it comes down to just uh, um, asking for help. Yeah. You know, uh, if you're gonna go into it as like a, a new artist and you're gonna go, okay, I want to do a convention by myself. I'm like, okay, but uh, remember, it's okay to ask for help. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. No, I, I totally agree. And same thing. I wish I would have learned those lessons like <laughs> yeah, yeah. early on. Obviously, now I'm kind of also learning from experience to to make those uh, adjustments and yeah. like better off for yeah. it. But yeah, yeah. Uh, I Yeah, I think the longest we've done was maybe three days as well. And yeah, yeah. by that third day, I'm just like. That's yeah. a tough one. Yeah, yeah. That's a super tough one because like your energy is low and like, you know, you can't just. Especially now post pandemic, I don't think food service is like there all the time yeah um so um you know so you kind of have to like prepare ahead you know you almost have to be very tactical about it and go like okay these there's going to be really hard time hard moments um you know expect that and like what are you going to do about it, you know yeah. i think people i think it's okay to take a break yeah you yeah. know one, one of my biggest uh frustrations is uh, uh i think right now we're, we're in that like well, I think we're a little better now with the pandemic, but uh, I think before the pandemic, there was this like, we have to be crushing it all the time. Mm -hmm. And I definitely was one of those people. Yeah. You know, and um, now, you know, after the pandemic, you know, I think there's still room to keep, you know, crushing it all the time. But I think also when you're tired, take a freaking break, man. Yeah. yeah you know, yeah, yeah. ask someone, you you can even ask a, a table mate. It's like, you know, so, or not a table mate, but someone next to you, table next to you. So I'm yeah. like, Phew, yeah. Questions, but, you can ask someone next to you and go, hey, can you just watch my booth? Yeah, go exactly. walk around. You yeah, know? Yeah, yeah. So take a break. Yeah, I I second that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, I definitely want to get to this because, sure. yeah, like this is amazing. Like I had the chance to read the digital version, but I'll, I'll put up the, the physical version here. Um, you mentioned like, yeah, this is years in the making. Like, can yeah. you kind of give us like a brief history of like in general, like how did this story come up like what yeah. inspired you to actually kind of create it and also like in the in the art style that you did yeah so uh joan i i pitch it as i mean the, the simple story is you know what if or the concept is what if quentin tarantino directed joan of arc yeah that's just kind of the the pitch right but yeah. the actual story is this joan is not it's very loosely based on the joan of arc story mm -hmm. uh, but very much like the real history she's you know betrayed by her country uh, burn at the stake for heresy and rebellion. Yeah. And so when she's in heaven, um, God regrets, you know, because he was expecting, yeah, um, you know, the uh that we that we would win and you know, you would basically rid France of of the English. But it turns out it didn't work that way. And the villain, King Henry, tends is overriding God's will. Mm. So he decides to give uh Joan a second chance and he says, Look, I'm gonna turn you into a BAMF. Uh, I'm going to give you uh, immortality, uh, and I'm going to give you infinite ammo. So yeah, he gives yeah. her modern military weapons, resurrects her, and sends her back. And she basically goes up against uh, corrupt cinephile kings, um, sorcerers, and K-pop a K-pop wushu assassin. Mm. So anyway, yeah. Um, but the history about that is, I, you know, I remember in 2017, I was sitting in my apartment in LA, it was sweaty. And it was one of those moments in my life where I just, uh, I think I, um, I think I drank the Kool-Aid. I think there was this talk about if you, you know, if you follow this path of what all these artists are doing, then you will be successful, mm -hmm. you know? And I never really had proper guidance or mentorship on this. So mm -hmm. I just assumed that that's what you do. So yeah. um, there was this, want and need to, you know, be validated as an artist. So, you know, I moved down to LA, I got all these storyboard jobs, but it was really tough. Yeah. You know, I wish looking back, I wish I did it a different way, which is maybe look for a mentor. Yeah. Um, you know, had interned and all that. But obviously I was also older by that point. So it was kind of tough for me to like stop everything, just go into that. And so anyway, um, 
Yeah, so uh, 2017, uh, it was really tough because, you know, I was working for, I was doing all these projects for people. And, you know, the way the industry works, and and this is not me just saying it, but there's a lot of people who try to rope you into something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And make you do like the bare minimum, thinking that this is the way to get in. Right, right, right. And so what ends up happening is you do it, but you don't end up anywhere. Yeah. You know, and I got really frustrated because there was that. And also there was a lot of, um, you know, there was a lot of this art directing my work and I was sitting there going like, what? okay, like what am I doing? You know, yeah. like, this is really frustrating. And what ended up happening is um, I decided, okay, I want to make my own thing. And at first I was thinking of directing a film because things weren't working out. I, I applied for the art director's guild apprenticeship mm-hmm. to get in. Mm-hmm. I applied for a couple other places uh, for a story purpose, storyboard positions, didn't get in. I did have one contact, but that fell through. Yeah. So things weren't working out right. And I was sitting there going, I don't remember any artist that I really like love and respect uh their works i don't ever remember them asking for permission right 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 right? yeah and i thought it was weird that here i am i'm waiting for like some gatekeeper yeah to give me the keys to this ivory art art tower yeah so anyway so i just said okay screw this i'm gonna do my own thing i don't know what it's gonna be but i'm gonna try and uh i was trying to go for this very technical uh what do you call it? It was like a um, a story that was really technical. Like I was thinking, okay, I'm going to make two knights dueling each other. I was heavily influenced by like, you know, uh, the films of Ridley Scott and James yeah, Cameron. Yeah, yeah. So I thought, okay, like they're super technical visually and uh, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to research the history and all that. And at one point I was like, okay, two knights are dueling each other. What's going to happen? One knight takes out a sword, charges towards the other. And I thought the other guy pulls out an M16. Yeah. That's the only thing that makes sense. <laughs> yeah. And I started adding on that and it became almost like a, uh, um, what do you call that? It just almost became like, like you're riffing with a friend. Right. And right. it's like, okay, uh, he's going to have an M16 and it's going to blow apart the other guy and it's going to be Joan of Arc. Yeah. It's yeah like, yeah. what the hell? You yeah, know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I just remember as I'm working on it, I'm laughing as right. I'm working on it. I was like, that's the feeling. You should have fun doing it. Right. Right. You know? And so, um, uh, yeah, so I, I made it, and then uh, uh, the first uh, iteration of the book was only chapter one, mm-hmm. and then uh, pandemic hit. I released it in comicsology. Then I decided I don't really want it to be a comicsology. I want to release it myself. Right, right, right. And then so uh, when I released it on my Gumroad account, I actually added uh, chapter two. Oh, okay. so that's what happened. And uh, so the reason why I did that is because volume one, I think. <laughs> gives you the flavor of what the drone world is going to be like yeah you know totally action-packed it's got kind of like really weird quirky dialogue yeah yeah um but i think moving forward though because me and the editor are working on the, the next uh, um uh series yeah uh next few issues so all the chapters are going to be released individually yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, online and in print form mm-hmm. um uh, we just figured because like this one volume one it just works so well together with chapter one chapter two together yeah, yeah, yeah. you know but the other chapters are going to be single issues. Um, you know, there it, it definitely is connected to this, but I would think the single issues is definitely better because I don't know, like we're working on volume two right now, or what is what was volume two, which is chapter three and chapter four. And yeah. it was like really exhausting because it was like, I don't know, it's just you're working on working on working on it. It may not even be released until I don't know, 2024. Yeah, yeah. And we're yeah. like, well, that doesn't make any sense. So let's just release it like issue by issue. So there's more of a continuation. And people are more like invested in the story. Right, right, right. So, yeah. Before we head it out, I always usually ask like, what has been some of your favorite projects or uh, I guess projects that you've worked on and then just like collaborative projects throughout like your your whole art journey? Um, yeah, I think Joan probably yeah, right yeah. now is like my favorite project to do. I mean, I always had like smaller projects I've done for people like making decals, graphic design projects, yeah, yeah, you yeah. know. Um, I think the most fun I ever had uh, were projects where I got to think out loud with someone, like brainstorm with another person. Yeah. Um, so right now, Joan is that. Joan yeah. is like really fun. It's like I get to work on it and then I get to talk to the editor and me and Robert are just going back and forth on it, you know. 
Um, so yeah, I think that's been the most fun. And I forgot what was the other question. Oh no, I, I think it's just all tied in. Like, oh, okay. yeah, like, yeah, if it's either your own project or collaboratives. So. Oh, okay. Yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. So definitely Joan right now has been like the most fun I've had on it. Yeah. It, it, there's something to be said about, you know, you, you work on something on your own and then you go to a convention and then people buy it. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It is like an amazing feeling, you yeah. know? Um, I mean, probably because of the validation, but also, you know, you just feel proud of your work and that the other people, other people can see that. Yeah. So I, I had someone actually who um, bought something for me. Uh, they bought Joan, but they bought a print. And they said they bought it solely based on my enthusiasm. Oh, wow. That's like, awesome. Man, that is awesome. Yeah. 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 So, yeah. Actually, yeah, that actually, I I remember uh, we didn't even get to talk about your blogs. Look, oh, I, I, okay. So maybe we can tie this in. Okay. I, I remember reading one of your blog entries and you had mentioned that of like it, your goal or one of your goals that would be cool is like to have your work be part of a conversation in the future. Yeah, right. So if it's people who are just like in a round table and they're just like, you know, shooting the shit or whatever. Yeah. And then they're like, oh, do you remember like that Joan comment? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And I think it, it speaks very similar to what you just said now about that. Where yeah. it's like, that's the thing that you kind of live for is just like those kind of conversations and people bringing you up yeah. as like inspiration. It, at that point. Yeah. And, and I think that's really important. I think um, so. And, and, and I don't think people mean anything when they say this, but there's a lot of people go, oh, you know, I love your work. And, uh, you know, let me keep this. And one day you'll be famous and it'll be amazing, you know. And I just, I, I, I you know, I always think like family and friends who say that. Yeah. But I think more importantly is I do it because it's like a continuation of a dialogue mm -hmm. that continues that dialogue. So, okay, think about this, right? I was thinking about when I was a, a high school student. Yeah. And I watched something, let's say uh, Akira. Yeah. And then I wanted to tell someone about it. Yeah. Right? It's yeah. like, oh, I just experienced the same. And then you meet a friend who experiences the same thing and now you're nerding out about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 20 years later, you know, I'm making my comic because I saw that thing and my friend's making a movie because he saw the same thing. Yeah. And now what's happening is, is that hopefully we're making stuff and it continues another dialogue with somebody else and they continue that process. Yeah. You know, th there's that point of inspiration that is so wonderful and it it, it is just amazing to watch it evolve and grow into something else yeah, yeah so you know this is one of the reasons why i love watching um you know combo creators and film directors get interviewed because that right there you get to hear the creative process yeah and it inspires other people to go do other things too yeah um so you know uh tarantino comes to mind right now uh you know i've watched countless interviews by him but he's always referencing films in his works, but he's also referencing films when he gives interviews. Mm. And, you know, it's almost like a uh, a literary review. Yeah. You yeah. know, he's going like, you know, I watched, uh, you know, Jean-Luc Godard's film, and it's because of that that inspired me to do Pulp Fiction like this, you know. And Juan Carr Wai is the same thing, right, with his films. Yeah. Um, in fact, one of the most recent mashup movies, uh, Everything Everywhere All at Once, yeah, yeah, is yeah. exactly that. Mm. You know, the Daniels talk about all these things that influenced them. They said, you know, uh, we want to do a a movie on a small budget, but had like that MCU like epicness feel. Yeah, and so they did that, and it's interesting because that also impacted me. You know, it's impacted other people too. Like people, you know, are thinking, yeah, we could do a family drama, but it doesn't have to be that genre. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah right, yeah. and so I think that's the thing. It's like I think that's why I do what I do. It, the fact that we're having this conversation here shows that, you know, things are evolving, things are growing, mm -hmm. and you're going to go and make your own thing, right? Because of the things that you were exposed to at an earlier age or recently. Right, right, right. right. And I think that's beautiful. I think creativity needs to continue to thrive because I think outside of that, I mean, I don't know, things are as they are. And yeah. I just, I don't like that. Yeah, yeah. And like how you said, the, just doing that where uh, now, based on something you created, you've inspired that person like you're doing that in real time where yeah. it's like 
before you just hear about it with like say yeah how we were talking about earlier like teenage mutant ninja turtles influenced you yeah but it's not like you're doing anything there you're just digesting it right but now you're you're on the up the you're on the opposite end now where like you're the one that creates something yeah and now you're inspiring those people yeah to, to do whatever at that right point. yeah and, and that's what i actually love to do is when i ever whenever i see something i i think a lot about what it is in terms of like the art history behind it yeah you know? so I, I look at something and I go, well, where did that come from? And, and it's really cool because when you see someone doing something that you like and you research it, you find out that it came from something else. Yeah. I only discovered Blade Runner because of the uh, the Danny Canyon, Stallone, Judge Dredd movie from 95. Oh, okay. Because I remember reading a review and then Roger Ebert said, the film looks like it's a blend of all these different movies and yeah. Blade Runner is one of them. So I actually went out and looked for Blade Runner. In 1993, I discovered Blade Runner. Yeah. And I was like, oh, this is really cool. Yeah. You know? And and then I found out Blade Runner was from, you know, really Scott was heavily influenced by heavy metal comics. Oh, yeah, See? yeah, yeah. And then you start doing that. And then now you're researching the history behind these art movements. Yeah. And then as a result of that, it's in your head now and it inspires more artwork. Yeah. So I think that's really important to have, you know? Yeah. No, I, I, I was kind of on the same boat, too, where growing up, I didn't watch it. I've always heard about it. And then finally, I watched uh, the original Blade Runner before the the more recent one came yeah. out. And then, yeah, it's just like finally understanding like all those uh, influences. And yeah. then, then you when you see that, then you're like, oh, OK, and now I can see what influenced this. Blah, yeah. Blah, blah, blah. So yeah, it's, it's like, really cool. It, yeah. Like, you know, people talk about uh, like I, I uh, I'm not I'm not a Lord of the Rings fan. Yeah. yeah right. Yeah. Uh, but. Um, I did have a chance to kind of research it and I didn't realize that, you know, Tolkien drew upon all these things. Oh yeah. yeah right. And yeah. it's like, Oh my God. Yeah. But that's the beauty. Cause then it, it exposes you to stuff. Like I think art is the place where art and food, I think is the place where you can experience things without prejudice. Mm -hmm. And that's one, one of the most beautiful things. Like, um, like I love Sergio Leone films. Yeah. And, uh, I didn't realize how much of it is influenced by, you know, Japanese cinema. Yeah. So yeah. then you dive into that and you go like, okay, like what did he do there? What did Akira Kurosawa do there? You know, then you realize, oh, he actually was influenced by American cinema too. Mm -hmm. uh, one, one of the things that um, uh, heavily inspires me is Sam Peckinpah movies. Mm -hmm. And so uh, uh, a friend said this uh, and I thought it was really interesting. So he says, where the wild bunch ends is where John Woo begins. Mm. Because in the Wild Bunch, it was like slow-mo gunfights. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And John Woo actually said in an interview, that's kind of where I got my ideas for my, my movies. Yeah, yeah. Right? And you're going, oh, whoa, that's where it came from? Yeah. You know? And it's a rabbit hole because you can keep researching this stuff. Yeah. But what that's doing is, is that it's actually going into your head and giving you more ideas. Yeah, yeah, You yeah. know? And I think the more you, you kind of like expose yourself to, I think the better it is as a creative person. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Totally. I oh, mean, like, I, I feel like we've only literally scratched yeah, the yeah, surface yeah. Or, <laughs> right, or, the, yeah. or the iceberg, as people say. Right, right, right. So we'll, we'll definitely have to, like, re For sure. re reunite and, like, do, like, another part. Because, yeah, I want to get so much more from, like, your blogs and your future projects that you're going to work on. Sure. Uh, but I, I want to thank you so much for taking the time. And this was an amazing conversation. Yeah, it was fun. It's, like, part one, probably. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, did you have any uh, shout outs or plugs that you wanted to, to give before, uh, before uh, we head out there? No, it's just, uh, uh, you know, if you're interested in Joan Volume 1, you know, you love the mashup genre, you love the whole like, you know, action and the stuff, you know, Tarantino movies or like, you know, like Samurai Shampoo, all that, you know, mm -hmm. check out uh, Joan Volume 1. It's at my website, Sid Studio, S Y D Studio Presents.com, Sid Studio Presents.com. Perfect. Yeah, I'll, I'll make sure to put the all the information and the video description and everything. So sure. easy access for people to. Awesome. <laughs> well, thank you so much, and uh, we'll we'll cheers to uh, sure. yes. your, your success, and uh, I can't wait to see like your future projects. So. Thanks, man. I appreciate awesome. it. Well, uh, and I want to thank everybody for tuning in as well, and uh, we will see you next time. Take care. Thanks again for listening. If you enjoyed the conversation, don't forget to subscribe to the podcast on your favorite platform. Follow us on Instagram, YouTube, and other social platforms to catch new episodes and updates. Want to learn more about the items and music featured in this episode? Links available in the episode description. Thanks again for listening and take care.